Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bone Horde. This is Sean, the Blonde Skeleton, and uh, this is an episode on rocks. So I've had a lot of questions about how I do my rocks um, and how I do my like mountain texture on uh, some of my pieces, particularly the big one you see right there. It's kind of Mod Podge, but not painted yet. Um, so um, it's the exact same technique that I use on all of my uh, on all of these pieces. Uh, my you know, stone mountains and islands and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. Um, the first step, which I'm not going to show you right now because it just, you know, it's not necessary, is I take a piece of 2-inch XPS foam and I cut it out with a hot wire cutter. Now you can do this in any shape you want. You can give it any kind of other texture that you want. I just start with a basic, just straight cut that has a lot of texture to the outside. That helps a lot in just kind of masking and concealing the other effect that we're gonna do to it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out to the garage and show you what I do next. Hey, so here we are in the garage. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a heads up about this technique. A um, couple of things. First of all, um, it's, it's a little dangerous, I'll be honest. Um, you're swinging around a knife that's really, really sharp and right near your hand. So uh, just a warning if you are, uh, if you're a kid or you're just not comfortable with this sort of thing, don't do it. Just don't do it. Second of all, make sure you're using appropriate safety equipment, okay? Um, this is perfectly okay to do as long as you are paying attention and as long as you are wearing safety equipment. Okay, so just use your safety equipment, pay attention to what you're doing, and if you're under 18, please get your parents' permission. Don't be watching a YouTube video and go, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll do this, and then, you know, go out and hurt yourself, okay? So, um, <clears throat> basically it's a really simple technique. Um, it's kind of like cracking up a, opening a uh, coconut with a, with a machete, basically. I'm going to take my drywall knife, which uh, I absolutely love. This one's a fancy, uh, expensive kind of model, but I like the size, I like the weight. Um, and uh, first thing I want to do is make sure I have a, a, a either a fresh or very sharp blade. And if it's not a fresh blade, then what I do is I take a whetstone and I just sharpen it up. I just run it across a few times, go in both directions at a low angle because you want to make sure that you're not, you know, re-honing that edge at, a, at the incorrect angle. It's a very thin blade, very uh, steep angle, okay? Second, I'm wearing some work gloves. You could probably wear some heavy leather gloves. Um, these are pretty sufficient for my purposes. Um, they have some protection around the fingers and whatnot. Um, and you also just want to make sure that when you're doing this, you keep your hand on the opposite side of the, uh, of the foam. Okay, because that's, that's really important. So let me tilt the camera and I'll show you how I do this. So it's basically a really simple technique. Um, this is going to be a little upside down to you guys, but uh, I'll try and flip it around and show you from uh, the opposite angle so you can see what's going on. But basically I'm going to take my knife and kind of at a, at a slight angle to the piece that I'm working on, I'm just going to uh, kind of uh, find the top side, right? And I'm going to kind of hold it behind it like this to keep my hand clear so that I'm whacking on this side and I'm holding it from underneath. Okay? And I'm just going to chop at it. Now you see what I mean. You see what I mean when I say it's actually kind of, kind of tricky and dangerous. Um, I'm just gonna whack at it like this. Okay. Again, it's very much like cracking open a coconut with a machete. It's the same kind of gesture, same kind of uh, technique. But you'll notice that the angle I'm cutting at is actually a little further in on the top and it doesn't protrude through the bottom necessarily. That's the, I do that for a reason because it creates a nice texture along the edge of this. And uh, after we get going a little bit, I'll show you how I give it that, uh, that super texture, right? So we just keep doing this. Okay. Um, for certain rock formations, um, if you go out in nature and you look at different rock formations, you'll notice that some of them, particularly things like basalt or uh, limestone or, or any of these kind of uh, uh, different kinds of rocks, they'll have a, a directionality to them, almost like a grain, right? The salt will have like sort of a, a crystalline columnar structure and uh, limestone is a sedimentary rock so it'll have layers where all that stuff stacks up. So, <clears throat> so you want to kind of pay, uh, pay attention to that sort of thing depending on what kind of rock you're making. 
Um, my rock here, I'm just going with kind of a basalt thing, so I'm kind of trying to make it uh, uh, almost a columnar structure here, okay? So again, I'm just gonna keep whacking at this. I'm gonna do it from different angles. I'm not gonna worry about it like chopping off chunks like this one just did, just broke off a big chunk. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that because where it breaks, it's actually gonna give me better texture, okay? Breaks on this foam because it's so brittle actually look a lot better than cuts. So you actually want that. Okay. Okay. I'm also kind of drawing it through the material as I hit it. Okay. Uh, another technique that I like to use rather than just holding it up in the air is to set it on the table. Set it slightly over the edge. This works pretty well for the most part, though it is a little hard on your back. Make sure you're getting different angles in there, but you don't want to uh, you don't want to go too far across in either direction because then it just looks like a bunch of X's. I like to vary it by just about 10 to 15 degrees is all I'm doing. 10 to 15 degrees of, of angle in either direction. Cool. So um, you see that we've got like a lot of texture around this edge here now. See, all the way around, we've got like bits you know, flying off and whatnot. Now the next part, um, if you want to kind of enhance this idea of erosion around the edges so that you get this kind of curved shape, which is one of the things that I love the most about this technique, um, all you gotta do is just take your finger and bring it across it and it chips off and breaks off those corners. And as I said before, the breaks are what makes a more rock-like texture, right? These slices and cuts are really straight, really clean, but these breaks are gonna look more like the rocks cracked along, you know, various fault lines or crystalline structures within the rock itself. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are killing me. Um, and it's gonna clean it up a little bit so you don't get a bunch of these little flaky bits. Uh, which kind of become a bit of a nightmare when you're sealing and painting it, okay? Um, which I'll be honest, when you make these things, you will realize that painting them is a bit of a nightmare, so. It's just a lot of texture in there. Okay. So I also use my blade sometimes to get some of this, but I try not to use that too often because again, it gives it a little bit too much of a straight cut. <coughs> All right, so that's pretty much it for the for the sides. Now, here comes the fun part. I'm gonna come over here. Where did I put it? There it is. Um, so this is something that uh, that actually RuneSmith showed on one of his videos a while back, and that is to take a rock, or a, he uses a a, a chunk of uh, a cinder block, right? Um, I actually use this fancy. Well, this is a fancy kind of aquarium rock called Sirius Stone. I was an aquarium guy for a while. But what I love about this rock is how textured it is. This is actually karsted limestone. So this is a, a, a great, beautiful texture with all of these, you know, great striations and whatnot in them. But that's just uh, like quartzite or calcite, one of the two. I don't remember what it is. Probably calcite. But anyway, so you want to take like one of these really textured rocks. Gosh, I wish you could see how textured this thing is. That's a little better. Um, and uh, I actually do this on the floor. <clears throat> so pardon this horrible noise that's about to happen. Oh, I guess it wasn't that bad. So I like to take this on the floor and just take my stone. Um, I actually use a glove for this as well because this limestone is really hard on your skin. Always thinking about safety and self-preservation. Very important. Right. So I take this on the floor, find my textured edge, and just bash the crap out of this thing. I don't even honestly have to hit it that hard. <clears throat> the weight of the stone is enough to do the job, right? But what I'm doing is I'm kind of turning it in odd directions so that we don't get a pattern out of this. You don't want your uh, your cracks and uh, 
dense to give you too much of a pattern because then what happens is right now I'm just using the flatter side to kind of pound this down so that my minis don't topple over when I set them on here. Anyway, just use the rock's natural weight. You don't actually have to hit it that hard. This stuff dents and crushes pretty easily. But what that does is it gives you a beautiful, let me see if I can catch the shadow here, figure out what direction my light's coming from. Well, I have two directions actually, so that's gonna be real tricky, but you can see, ah, there we go. There's some good texture, look at that. So now we have cracks and we have uh, different levels going on on top of that thing. And when we get that painted up and then uh, throw a black wash on it, it settles into these cracks and whatnot so that it looks really, really cool. Just very realistic. So that's pretty much it for uh, shaping, texturing uh, uh, the stone pieces. So uh, th this is the exact same technique I used on the big backdrop piece on the Dwarven Reliquary. So um, very little of that is different. Um, I do use this wonderful tool, which is a Proxon handheld uh, wire cutter. The reason why is because if you look closely, you can shape that wire. And that gives me a little bit more texture on the outside and it made it a lot faster to cut those things, but that by no means, by no means is that required. Okay, you can do all of that cutting with a knife, just cut V's in a vertical shape. Again, kind of that columnar um, basalt kind of structure. <clears throat> and then just chop it away with the, with the same knife. So that's pretty much the whole technique right there. Uh, the next step would be to seal it with uh, Mod Podge and black paint, and then uh, lay down a nice coat of gray, which I usually do with my airbrush to get into the, the texture there, and then uh, give it some uh, dry brush with highlights, wash with a black, and then highlight it again, and it's, uh, it's good to go for the table. So that's pretty much it. I don't know that there's anything else to say about this. It's a pretty simple technique. Again, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, safety first. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you're cutting away from yourselves. And do not attempt this if you're underage, okay? Not without your parents' permission and supervision. It's really, really important you don't screw around with this. Um, the first few times I did this, I actually did cut myself open. So it's really important that you use uh, safety. Make sure that your, your uh, foam is secured to the table or surface that you're, you're chopping it on and that your hands are totally out of the way. Um, I don't want people coming out of this with, you know, one less finger. Oh my God, why? Why? Oh God, why? Yeah, don't do that. Don't be silly. Be safe. Okay, that's it, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.